This video is going to cover what you can do to prepare for pursuing a degree and career in things like engineering, physics, or math, which is a common question especially among high school students. But before I go into that, I just want to acknowledge the question of how much experience or preparation do you need to major in one of these? I did a full video on this before for engineering, but just to summarize everything, you really don't need any additional experience on top of your high school classes. Having more experience would help, of course, but assuming you can get into college, you can study computer science or engineering having never written a single line of code in your life. You can major in electrical engineering if you've never connected a single circuit. And at some schools, you can even major in physics or math having never taken calculus or a physics course in high school. Although there are colleges that do require it, so make sure to do your research. Colleges assume you have not learned a lot of this yet, and most people going into these majors don't have much, if any, hands-on experience. If anything, they have experience from an AP Chem or Physics class in high school, but that's about it. Yes, they can help you get into college if you've taken those AP classes, and if you have experience in programming or something, it'll help in the beginning, but it's not required. You just need your required courses completed in high school. And most people I knew started off in Calculus 1 and Physics 1 in college, and if you feel intimidated going into some of these STEM majors because of people around you with experience, don't worry because the majority of people are in a very similar situation to you and you should use college to get ahead as much as possible. But if you are in high school and looking to get a head start, there are some things you can do. First is the easiest and that's take as many math and science classes as you can depending on what you intend to study. Whether you major in engineering, physics, or chemistry, you will have to take some calculus in college. If you take it in high school, that means you can either get credit and skip that class in college or you can at least get exposure to it and you can retake the class in college, but now with an extremely solid foundation. Some schools offer engineering classes, electronics classes, you can of course take computer science classes at your school, and more. The most helpful course I personally took in high school is calculus-based physics, which is called AP Physics C. Some schools don't offer it, and you do need calc before taking it, but I used those concepts even in my third and fourth year of college and I had a good foundation because of that class. And on the topic of classes, even while in high school, you can take classes at a community college like in the evening, which is something I did. This helps if one, the class you want to take is not offered at your school, or two, you want to get college credit for that class. It could be a history course you just don't want to take in college, or maybe Calc 3 if you've taken all the math classes your high school offers. Now going outside of your classes, one thing you can do whether you're going into engineering, physics, or even applied math, is learn how to program. I also did a video on how much programming engineers do, but learning this skill is very valuable in the job market and needed for a lot of job positions. You'll likely do it in college, so again you don't have to learn it beforehand, but it does help. One of the best languages to start with is Python, but C++ is another common one I see people start with. And I'll provide a link to a YouTube series of tutorials below if you want to get started totally for free. You don't need to pay anything to download what you need and start writing code. If you're thinking about computer engineering, electrical engineering, or mechatronics, then you can consider buying an Arduino and making projects with it. You'd have to purchase this, but you can get it for less than 50 bucks on Amazon, and with it you can do a lot. A first project you can do is make an LED turn on and off with a frequency of half a second, let's say. You can download the software for free and watch tutorials on how to get started programming it. And for a simple project like this, they actually include it with the download so you can just see what it looks like and start playing around with it automatically. I'll provide a link below to that for total beginners which you can look at to see if it's something worth doing. As an electrical engineer, I had an entire class on projects using an Arduino during my third year and learning how to use it to begin took some time for sure, so a head start would have definitely helped. But with these do-it-yourself projects, what you want to do is find a project you want to try and actually do it. Look up basic something projects for beginners, whether it be programming or robotics, and get it done. It's not for a class, so there's no time limit. That sense of accomplishment of completing a project completely on your own will feel really good, plus you'll learn a lot of things along the way from things you get right and wrong. Another thing to consider is joining any clubs at your school. The most common one you hear of is Robotics Club, but there are others you can join related to math, science, health, and more. But something that is really important in preparing yourself for a degree or career in really anything, whether you're in high school or not, is to be and stay very curious and passionate about learning as much as possible about your field and even the world around you. This means learning about your industry, possible career paths, what companies are out there and what they're working on, the latest startups and projects, and more. And that doesn't mean in a super zoomed in way. So for aerospace engineers, you can learn the equations for velocity change needed to go to a different orbit and do practice problems to prepare for college or your next semester. 
But you can also spend your time learning about the history of NASA, the Apollo program, watch documentaries about SpaceX and try to understand how they're changing the way rockets are built, and so on. School is going to teach you the equations you need to know, how to program, how to take the triple integral of some function, how these apply to the real world, and more. But when it comes to staying updated on current events, being familiar with the most important people in some sector, what companies are working on what, and more, you can do this all on your own and you'll learn a lot along the way. Do you want to work in the defense sector? Then learn what companies are out there and what projects they've worked on. Do you want to work on computer hardware? Read up on the history of Apple, Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, and more of those types of companies. Then stay updated on what's going on in the industry now. If you want to be a math major and don't know who Paul Erdős is, one of the most prolific mathematicians of the 20th century, you can read his biography and see how he lived his life and the contributions he made. Try to learn one new thing every day at least and keep staying curious. As you learn more, you might see there are things out there you never even knew existed, which may take you down a possible career path or business venture you never knew you could even like. On social media, try to find as many people and businesses related to your interests and follow them. Then even as you scroll through your feed, you will inevitably come across articles and posts that can keep you updated on what's going on in the world, rather than just reading what your friends are doing. Then also try to read everything you can get your hands on. This doesn't have to mean textbooks either. Read biographies of people you idol. You can read about basic manufacturing techniques for those wanting to go into something like mechanical engineering. Or you can read Basic Machines and How They Work, which is an old book, but you can learn up on the basics of machinery. There's why buildings stand up and why buildings fall down. There's The Pragmatic Programmer, and of course more. These are all books I saw on various websites of top books every engineer should read. People interested in physics can read A Brief History of Time, Neil deGrasse Tyson's book on a summary of astrophysics, biographies of many of the most famous physicists out there, etc. There are plenty for those who have an interest in math as well, and I'll be linking all of this down below to save time. But I bring these up because most of them are not technical textbooks that require as much focus and brain power. When we try to teach ourselves new technical topics like self-teaching the next math class, it can be easy to get discouraged when you inevitably hit that point where you're confused and can't move on. But whether it's reading these books, watching documentaries, or just following an important person on Facebook, these will allow you to learn a lot without getting as discouraged about not understanding something new. There are a million ways you can get ahead and optimize your future, but these are just a few that are fairly doable. Remember, doing a lot of these things is not required and you can still be successful if you enter college having simply completed all your required high school courses. But if you feel like going above and beyond, I hope you put some of these into practice. Links to many of the things I talked about are also below if anything piqued your interest. Otherwise, if you liked the video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.